Hey there, it's Jeff from Modern Combat and Survival, and let me ask you, do you have a bug out bike? Well, they're all the rage right now, and in this episode, I want to share with you five key factors that you want to think about when it comes to your backup evacuation vehicle. Check this out. Okay, everyone, this is Jeff Anderson from Modern Combat and Survival Magazine, and Look, we always, we always talk about, like, if you have to bug out in an emergency, obviously the very first choice that you're going to take is going to be your primary vehicle, right? Whether your truck or your car, whatever it is, that's going to get you the farthest, the fastest, that you can, and, and carrying the most gear that you possibly can. However, we all know that in an evacuation, at some point you can hit that point where either your vehicle breaks down or you hit that, that traffic jam, that virtual parking lot, where you can't go any further. And the last resort is gonna to be to put your bug out bag on your back and have to start hoofing it somewhere. You don't wanna do that, right? I might be able to go 25, 30 miles if I'm in shape with my bug out bag in one day. Um, if I have family members with me, that might be down to only maybe five, 10 miles. So your best bet is gonna to be to have your backup, kind of an intermediate evacuation vehicle, which is going to be a bicycle, really works best. but. Not all bug out bikes, if you will, are made the same and people aren't really necessarily tricking them out the way that they need to. So I wanna give you five key factors in this episode right now that you should think about when it comes to your backup evacuation, all right? So the first one comes with the bike itself, which is how do you choose the right bike? Now, we had a, an expert on one of our podcasts a long, long time ago that said the best bike is actually a hybrid bike, a, a base, not a hybrid bike, a, um, a touring bike, which looks like a 10 speed, like kind of your normal 10 speed bike. And it's made to go long distances, which makes a lot of sense, right? Because most people go out there and they get some sort of a mountain bike. Well, I prefer a more hybrid approach. So I still do like the ruggedness of a mountain bike. It's much easier for most people to ride because you can sit more, you can sit up straight uh, more. So, um, so I like it a lot better, but you have, to bit, you have to get the right one. So you go out there and listen, the prices are all over the place, but you can get a very good mountain bike here for um, under $500 definitely, but usually around maybe $300 or so, you can get a pretty good one. What you're really looking for is the weight the rigidity of the frame and the weight. So you can spend a lot of money on like a carbon fiber frame. It's not necessary I per, uh, for this purposes of evacuation. I prefer something that's either like steel or aluminum. Uh, they're making steel very lightweight these days. Um, I believe that this one is, um, well, this is a giant. So um, what you wanna do though is when you take it, when you're at the bike shop, is to be able to lift it up. Now this even has my gear on it. You're looking for about a 30 pound bike, but you should be able to lift it up easy. A lot of the bikes, you know, they're, you've got to, like, they're heavy to begin with. Realize that you're going to be pedaling all of that weight. So you want it to be as lightweight as possible. The other things you want to look at are with the tires, you want them to be quick release if you can. So you don't want to have to take wrenches out in order to be able to take off your tires. These just have uh, latches on them. You just open it up, spin it off with your fingers. The tires pop right out. So if you need to store it somewhere or basically this is going to go on your vehicle, Oh, when you're bugging out, so it's your backup. But you want those tires to be able to come on and off um, really, really easily if you can. All right. So you want to take care of that. Um, this does the, my bike right now doesn't have water water bottle cages on it, but you definitely want to have as many water bottle cages as you can. I don't put one behind my seat because I'm going to explain why here in just a minute. But you want to make sure that it does have water water bottle cages so that you can reach in and get water very, very easily. All right. Okay, um, and the other thing, well, let's see. So, oh, the other thing I wanna point out when it comes to your bike is that with the pedals, you wanna make sure that you do get something that has the ability to strap in. Uh, this has just very, very simple uh, lat, uh, straps right there. But what that allows you to do is to be able to pedal where most of your power is going into the force of pushing the bike along. It allows you to create, uh, be able to pull up with your feet, uh, on the on the upstroke, not just having to push down with the downstroke. Okay, if that makes sense. So it allows you to, to be able to pedal a lot easier, especially when it comes to hills, and um, you know be, being able to pedal when you need to get some, like good traction going up. Uh, you're definitely going to want some sort of strap there. Okay. All right. So now let's talk about what to do after you get your bike. So the very first thing I do because mountain bikes typically come with very knobby tires, right? They're made for off-road terrain. And you don't wanna go off-road if, if you can help it at all, because it is very hard sometimes to be able to pedal in soft dirt, mud, uh, even, even on things like um, even dirt trails that have wood chips on it. Uh, they might be great for walking, but they're very hard to pedal in. So you wanna be on the road as much as possible, okay? Because that's, 
That's the trail you would normally take anyway with your vehicle. You can just kind of carry on with a bike. Um, so um, one thing I do, one thing that is good about the touring bikes is the tires that they use. Well, what I do is I, the very first thing I do when I get a mountain bike is I trade out the tires for a hybrid bike. So I want to take away the knobby tires. You want as much traction on the road as possible. The more knobs and, and that stuff you have, it actually creates resistance for you when you're trying to pedal. So with these tires, they actually have a smoother uh, main part of the tread where it will give you more, more tread on the road, be able to get you um, be able, be able to um, travel a lot easier on roads, okay? And that's really what you're looking for. But there's still traction there if it's raining out, if it's, if, if it's inclement weather, or if I need to go off, off road, it allows me to do that as well. So first thing I do, I trade out the tires, okay? The other thing you'll notice on this bike is that it does have pannier racks. So these are something that you normally see with touring bikes, but allows you to put pannier, uh, um, uh, basically the bags, for touring. So if you're going to go cross country, you would basically it's your luggage, right? On top of your bike. So all we do is we have the racks on here. I have a, a rack on the uh, above the uh, top tire. It's a, it's a back rack. I have racks um, on the front here. So as well. So I've got the back covered and I've got the front covered. Now this is one of the reasons why you, and I don't use pannier uh, uh, bags. I use my X-Bob bug out bag as a as my basically my stuff so this basically just allows you and this is why i like the modular uh, version of our tactical bag the x-bob because we can take it off um, my, my blowout kit goes on the front of the handlebars here i can choose to take my larger packs and put them i could put two on each side here on the front i can distribute the the um the weight a lot better using the pannier racks my main compartment of my bug out bag goes on top of here i can even put my uh my machete underneath it to keep it hidden for the most part. Um, but you definitely do not want to have your bug out bag on your back and try riding with it. Uh, mainly because it just, it throws your balance all off and you can fall off very easily. Um, it's a lot harder for you to ride. It flops all over the place. It, it puts more stress on your back. You want to distribute the weight on your bike as much as possible. So definitely get some pannier racks. Um, if you have one of our X Bobs, that's why we, we created it the way that we did. It allows you to take it and, and put it in different areas around your bike, all right? Okay, now, beyond carrying the, the bags on the pannier racks themselves, the other thing that you can do is to get some sort of a bike trailer that you can use as well, all right? So there are trailers that are made for bikes. So this one just basically latches onto the back of the of the uh, where the tires are, so it'll just go right on there. I can carry it behind me, and what that does is allows me, if I want to, I can just put another bug out bag in there. My kids aren't maybe necessarily going to be able to uh, be able to take take the bike. My grandkids aren't going to be able to take the uh, their own bike and, and put their bug out bag on there as well. But they can. I can put it inside of a trailer. I can carry it maybe further. I might just choose to put all my stuff in there. Now another version of the uh, the bike trailer. This is an off road bike trailer that I like a lot. But you could also look at something like a kids uh, trailer that you normally stick the kids in. Right? You see them out. You know, parents out driving their kids around in that nice shaded little uh, that kid stroller that that goes on the back of the bike. You could use that as well. That uh, the what, thing I like about that is that you could even put an AR-15 in there, hide it inside of there so that it's ready. Um, you know, you might not be able to. You're not gonna be able to do that necessarily when you have your bug out bag on your back. But if you wanted to carry something like a carbine rifle, you could put it inside of there and hide it. Um, that works as well. So that's another alternative that you have. The last thing I'll talk about that you want to add on here is a toolkit. So anything can happen, just like with your vehicle, it could break down, your bike can break down also. The most common thing that's going to happen is you're going to get a flat tire. That's going to be the most common thing, and that right there can stop you like that if it happens, right? So one thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you have just a couple of key things. And this is a larger, I just got a larger bottle for this video, but this is a tube sealant. So basically what this does is if you have a puncture in your tire, it allows you to put this inside of where you would normally um, put the, uh, uh, where the tube would go and everything, and it allows you to basically, it's a, just like on your vehicle, it's a fix a flat essentially. So it basically gums up where the, the puncture is and allows you to be able to uh, keep air in it. And you wanna have some sort of a very small pump here that you can use as well to be able to fill that tire back up. Now there are some uh, CO2 cartridges basically that you can use as well. Some of them even have a fix a flat um, that go along with them. And that is just a quick shot in, it fills it all up. However, when you're done with it, like once you use it once, it's done. So I like to have something that I can use over and over again right here 
uh, in this little thing, uh, this little tube right here. Uh, so that's some of the things that you would want to put in your toolkit. All right, so I could go into this further. We cover more of this inside of our free survival gear book. You can go ahead and grab that over at survivalgearsecrets.com or use the link that goes along with this, uh, with this video or in the resources where this, uh, this video or this podcast is. So, um, but I want to hear from you. What are some other things that you've done for your bug out bike? Whether it's add-ons or whether it's uh, whether it is uh, factors that in your in your choice of a bug out bike, uh, but what is it that you've done even aftermarket? So go ahead and leave something in the comments here. Let me know what you've done as far as your choices and what you've done aftermarket. And until our next episode, this is Jeff Anderson saying: prepare, train, and survive.